let's try this again. Hi, hello. Okay, I see people coming back on. Instagram is just a, a tough, confusing, um, a little a little baby. So we're gonna, I'm gonna snag Paula again in a sec. Um, I feel like she was just blowing my mind and then Instagram was glitching and I was like, come on, no. Oh yeah, here, I'll pin her so everyone can see. Here by, ooh, I wanna make sure I get her name right. A hair by Paula Peralta, hold on. I see you, Paula. I'm just adding your thing to the bottom. Hereby, Paula Peralta. Okay. So people know what is good. How do I pin it? Oh, come back. Come back. How do I pin my own comment? Ah, figured it out. I am a genius. Okay. Okay, I'm going to grab her now. Shh. Come back, come back. Come back to me. I'm so sorry. It just, it's freaking internet. Classic. Um, I actually, I shifted so that um, I'm, I'm closer to my, like Wi-Fi is the best and the worst thing in the world. <laughs> I just don't understand it. I, I have to use my like phone's data or everything will crash. And still, also it's the time of day for some reason. Anyways, I'm not going to let that in to my apartment. That's this is right. going to go well. This is going right. to be good. Totally. Um, anyways, you were you were literally blowing my mind, and then it started glitching out, and people were like, we can't hear Paula. So anyone who's just joining us, for one, this is my incredible friend and hairstylist, Paula Peralta. Everybody. Pew, pew, pew. for having me. Like, when you asked me, I was like, yes. I say, oh, yeah. I love you so much. I've That's missed you. I've missed you so bad. I'm ready to get this music video shoot on soon so that I have an excuse to get my hair done. I've just been so busy. <laughs> but I think we should do a social distance hair appointment. Done. Hopefully soon. Done. Um, mm. So anyways. Yeah. So like, we were, I mean, we were just talking about asking questions and like how a question always empowers and gives you like more uh, possibilities. Paul uh, Peralta. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. So what, I mean, basically just like a lot of the questions I ask is if I'm feeling funky, um, who does it belong to is the question I ask. And I was going to say, give me like your top three questions. I'm going to write them down. Okay. <laughs> So my, the first one is, uh, what else is possible? Like, like another option. Yeah. So like when you go back to the, um, like the blinders or like the, you, when we're talking about, um, like going to the buffet and it's like going to the buffet and being like, I'm only going to eat fried chicken, but there's like vegetables and fruit and like prime rib and the dessert bar. But it's like, if you're not actually thing that's available to you, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. My manager literally just called me. I'm like, dog, <laughs> you know. Oh, they know. They literally are the only people who have access to my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> and they're so gone. Okay, so sorry. No, you're totally fine. I'm uh, writing this down, by the way. <laughs> so, yeah, so the first one is what else is possible? And that, that just actually, like, what it does is, is it acknowledges to the universe that you're willing to receive everything that it desires to give to you. So, like, you can ask that when things are great. You can ask that. I see you with the broom idea. That's really funny. Um, so, you like, you can ask them that, um, or them. You can ask the universe that, like, when things are great and, like, when things aren't great. Like, what else is possible here? Like, if, if I knew not this... Like, what else is possible? Mm. So you can do that, like, literally in any situation. And it energetically just acknowledges to the universe that, like, okay, cool. I'm actually willing to receive other possibilities. 
Um, the other one you can ask. I, can I just pause you before you go on to the next one? I love that one in particular because I think in quarantine and isolation, we feel like our options are very limited. And yes, in, in some ways, physically, it, it can't, we are more limited to maybe the life we were used to before. But I love asking that question, particularly in this like era we're in, because I don't know, just saying like, what else is possible? What, what reality what other reality is possible to me or what other mindset is possible to me to, for me to access right now? I feel like if we all asked ourselves that those kinds of questions when we like woke up in the morning, journaled about it, talked about it with called our mom and we're like, literally what other option is available to me? Like, yeah. I feel like it's one thing I think practicing it in just straight up asking the universe is incredible. But then like, keep it holding yourself accountable and like asking real he like human beings to yeah. anyway yeah. sorry totally. no and you're like so spot on with that because the other thing too is like it never shows up the way you think it's going to so like you're asking for like okay so you know whatever you whatever the issue is or problem or whatever and you're like okay what else is possible here like I know that there's there are infinite possibilities available to me but it's like I can't see it right now so like universe show me and then but if you, the thing is, you can't go into conclusion about what you think it's going to look like or how it's going to show up because you might miss it. It's, mm -hmm. And that's why, like, when you realize you can ask what else is possible, but you can't be attached to the outcome or, like, think, like, well, it has to show up like this. Because it often, like, even look at, look at over the past year, the way your career has, like, taken off. Like, has any of it been the way that you, like, I've watched you. Like, I knew you way back when. Has any of it ever shown up exactly the way you thought it was going to? Oh, my God. I mean, absolutely not. Especially the fact, I mean, especially the fact that the song that happens to be making me relevant <laughs> in the music industry is, A, about my failed, failed marriage, whatever, jokes, yeah. but also... It came out over a year ago. Right. This, nah, none of this makes sense. Like, the moral of the story now, happening now, makes no sense to me. So, totally. yeah. And, like, it's like, what if you, it's like, what if you give up a year ago when you released that song? And you were just like, oh, it didn't hit, number one, I'm out. <laughs> right? like, I'm done. There, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of times in my career that I've been like, Wow, I've been working so hard for so long. Maybe, maybe this isn't my thing. Yeah. You know? Well, and it's, yeah. And even when you look at like your current relationship, it's like, would it have shown, did it show up the way you thought it was going to? Or like, if you can, you can literally look at it with anything. It's like, none of it ever shows up the way you think it's going to. And it's like, the minute you try to control the outcome, like it, it completely kills the possibility. So mm. what else is possible here that I haven't even considered actually opens the door. And then the next step there is to not try to go into an answer. Like you don't actually answer the question. You just put the energy of the question out there and be willing to receive whatever the universe is going to deliver. Woo. Woo. <laughs> I, anyone, conversation. I just feel like for anyone who doesn't know you are also, um, is it called access consciousness? Yeah. I'm an facilitator. access consciousness counselor. Is that right? A facilitator. Yeah. Facilitator. I, I feel like I have gotten, I mean, I'm so, I get a front row seat. Yeah. Literally while you're doing my hair. <laughs> but I feel like it's been so incredible because even since I met you, I've seen you. Because yeah. when you when we first started when we met, we were both married. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about that for two seconds? Yeah, totally. And our friendship has gone through. I mean, like time wise, yeah. Over th over three or four years, yeah. We're both divorced bitches now. <laughs> Just like let's see what the universe <laughs> has <laughs> for us. Um, anyways, I'm totally rambling, but the reason why I was saying that is because I, 
I just like in order to like build you up and um, to make you understand how like I, how much of the world I think of you. I think that like I've seen I saw you. You were always like bubble big energy when I walked in the room and you were there. But it was also like you'd have grown in like incredible massive ways since we first met. And I know that it's so due to these practices that you're, you're doing in your own life. And so I don't know, I just really want to encourage everyone to ask these questions. Cause anyways, I stopped you and I want to hear the other questions. So, um, also too, like, um, there, and yes, it's like when you do the work, whatever that looks like, and it, it doesn't even have to be like hard work. It can be fun, but it's like, even if you're like, oh, hey, like everything I thought I knew is a lie or whatever that is, it's like, there's still kind of this, like, there can be this underlying joy and like the adventure of living, even when you're like in the thick of it, you know, Somebody like said this should be a podcast. And I was like, yeah, we should absolutely have a podcast. <laughs> okay, let's start doing it. Done. You have a podcast already? No, but, no, but let's create one. I just feel like <laughs> listen, listen. Over. I <laughs> hold on. Listen. As social media influencers, as the social media influencer that I am, <laughs> that I identify with myself, <laughs> I I don't know. I just feel like if you don't already have a podcast, you should, and we should figure that out. Okay, done. Will you be okay. my? <laughs> Oh my gosh, so funny. Also, I just, I sorry, I interrupted you. No, I love what you say, but also what? Uh, I'm just saying all these comments. Comments. Co co um, anyways, I, I love, I love what else is possible. I love asking question, um, who am I today? Oh, yeah. Who am I today? And what grand and glorious adventures am I going to have? I love the end. That's <laughs> so good. Um, and then who does this what belong to? Thing. It's like, like, what if that is? What'd you say? I said, what if life is the adventure of living? Like, what if that's what it's about? Like, oh, man, when you did that one Instagram story <laughs> post and you were oh, in Ireland, I was in England. You were in England, and you were like, what if the adventure of your life is living today? I can't remember. You have to say so, it again, but. Yeah, well, I was just talking about how, um, like, what if you could create a life that you didn't need a vacation from? Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. I, I, ugh, I just feel like I've been. I'm feeling really aggressive about this one because I feel like I have seen so many people in my own life seek out the comfortable option and then be miserable. Um, and so, like, if you are on here watching and read it, like, listening to us and, and writing comments, like, I so encourage you to, oh, like, the comfortable thing is is not always the, the right the right thing and I just really man I would love to see more people do the thing that scares them that might actually fulfill them and like seeking a life of fulfillment well we're just like bing 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 I feel like a squirrel right now with you oh, oh my goodness but it's like that's the thing and I and that's really <laughs> I love that you like brought up both of our divorce like I mentioned to you that um like I struggled with depression like for a lot of my life and I didn't even realize that that was actually what was happening and for a while I was on medication um and then like as I started to use these tools um which ironically also it's mental health awareness month but like as I started to use these tools um like I I started to get more of me and it's like when you have you and when you are willing to have your own back harder than anyone else, like that's actually when you're, when you can keep showing up and that's when your life gets really great. And um, like mm. talk about the, what about creating a life that you don't need a vacation from? It's like, I did the nine to five thing. Like I did the like put paper pushing and hating my life and all of that. And it's like, I made a change and it didn't show up the way that I thought it was going to. I got laid off. I ended up going to hair school. Like, and then now, now look at me, a celebrity hairdresser. 
Now look at you, a social media influencer in real life. <laughs> right? So it's like, but if you were, if I were to like really recount over the past like 10 years of my life, like it, none of it showed up the way I thought it was going to. But it's like, what I will say now is I'm more me than I've ever been. And I'm happier than I've ever been. And I know that it's going to keep getting greater. So like, that's the, that's the value of asking questions and to getting to more of you. And even like, um, so what I was going to say is like, if you're, if you're living a life that you feel like you need a vacation from, or you're like working for the weekend, obviously we're in quarantine right now, a lot of us, but it's like, you have choice. Like you can make a different choice. You, you get to choose. You get to choose. And you always get to make a different choice. Like what if a choice was only good for 10 seconds? And then after 10 seconds, you can choose the same thing if it's working for you. And if it's not working for you, choose something else. Like, and that's where, going back to, like, our divorces, our divorce, I mean, when me and Ash got divorced. We our should. divorce. <laughs> but <laughs> even when you look at something like divorce, um, like, culturally, it's still even kind of something that's a little, like, frowned upon, right? Like, it's a little taboo. Like, there's sometimes, some people have some, like, points of view about it. Like, but it's, like, it's yeah. just a point. Like, if you, if you weren't, like, this is the worst thing ever. This is the best thing ever. It's just a choice. And then you, you know, like you can choose to be married, you can choose to not be married. And it's like, in your case, you got divorced, you wrote a hit song that now is skyrocketing you to stardom. <laughs> but it's like, I made a good choice. <laughs> but it's like, it was just a choice. And like, if you chosen to stay married, like, who knows what would have shown up. And it's not to say that you wouldn't have skyrocketed to stardom in another way. But it's like, it, when you when you take the like right and wrong out of choosing and you just acknowledge it's just a choice and you would always choose something different if it's not working for you but it's like the point is you get to choose like you get to choose the life that you want to have and that I think that's where when you go to the like comfortable thing <laughs> when you go to like the comfortable thing it's like that's that's what it's hard to like if you don't want to if you if you want to be comfortable then that's a choice mm. Yeah, I feel like I feel like in a lot of cases people feel in in quarantine especially or this like era we're in, it feels like the choice has been taken away and they feel like they've been robbed of their ability to choose. Mm -hmm. Um whatever that may be, choice to leave their house, choice to be a positive person that day, like from from physical realm to, to the spiritual mental realm. And I think that I feel like the moment you give your power away and you go, yep, I don't have a choice. Yep, I don't I don't get to choose. This is this reality is my reality and that's it. And and I feel like I feel like I might rub some people the wrong way, but I think that Oh, I just feel like if you can take the power back, then you get the opportunity. You get this incredible opportunity to switch the whole thing around and actually live a life of like fulfillment and satisfaction. And oh, I don't know. No, um, but you're right. Yeah. Because you are 100% spot on because it's like, like the joy of living is that you get to create your life. And so that's where like when we started this morning or this morning, when we started seven hours ago, but <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> when you actually look at like, if you take all the definitions off, it's like, what do you actually want to choose? And then from that space, you just keep choosing and you're like, Oh, like that's actually not what I desired to create. So I'm going to try to choose this now. And it's like, you take the right and wrong off of it and you just keep choosing what what else is possible what else is possible <laughs> um, i'm a quick learner i know you're doing so good by the way how much um how much time do we have how long does this go for oh usually it's about 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> so get so off we were done 30 minutes ago so leave <laughs> no, I mean, I, it's, not, it's not really a set thing. I'm just like, hi, everyone. I'm talking to so-and-so, and I really want to chat for X amount of time. No, it, you're totally good. I feel like this has been so good. We keep getting people being like, this is definitely a podcast. I know. 
You Very should fun. make a date with when these podcasts are coming out. Yeah, I think this could absolutely be. Um, I also have, I'm let's do. I have some stuff um for your fans for a giveaway. So if you want to do a giveaway, like, really? Yeah, we can talk about it later. Um, I called the um my friend Lindsay Provost who does PR for Paul Mitchell, and she's like has all these little packages together, so we can do like a giveaway to your fans. Fun. Yeah, it'll be super fun. I'll let's do it. Maybe we'll put together like a list of all the products that I use on your hair when I style it or something like that. We'll figure it out. Ooh, and then that be part of the giveaway? Yeah. Like, Ooh. like how to get your quarantine hair looking right. Do yeah. you want roots like this? Ooh. <laughs> She's so schmexy. Ooh. I really do. I really do need you. I feel like it's kind of a look though. People have been forgiving, like like yeah. What are you gonna do? Like you're in quarantine. And give me a thumbs up emoji if this is some social media influencer. Hey everybody, give me a thumbs up if you like the roots. <laughs> Click subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to tell your friends. Please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Oh, I'm getting some thumbs up. Look at these thumbs up. We like the roots. You're fired, Paula. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> person, I, Kyla, said, get the broom. She's the one, they're the one that keeps saying, like, to color your hair with the broom. So, like, you know, social distancing. Like, oh! I was, like, <laughs> I was like, are they being mean to you? Are my fans being mean to you? Oh, Stop it. Your fans are the best. Look at all of these thumbs up. Who knew? Okay, so this is what this is telling me, is that I do get to choose... But right now, I'm choosing the roots until we can actually be together. Right. Like, okay, this doesn't work for me. So, um, yeah. So okay. funny. Oh, um, <laughs> the thing I wanted to talk to you about is, okay, so the, the third question is, mm. who does it belong So this is the one that you, I love so much. Yes, that's right. Take those notes, girl. Take those who, notes. What, what was it? Who does it belong to? Oh, this is my favorite. Yeah. Okay, for anyone who's just jumping on, can you tell people what we're doing? Okay. Yeah. Hey everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Ash. <laughs> Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> What's up, you guys? <laughs> um, no, but really. No, no. So, <laughs> my name is Paula Peralta, also known, aka Hair by Paula Peralta. Um... Um, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, hold on. <laughs> wait. So, um, okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, someone's like, hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I really made oh, my hair. Welcome to Ash's podcast. <laughs> I'm oh. your Okay, anyway, so my name's Paula. I am not, okay, these people are like, I, they're killing me. You guys oh. are influencers. <laughs> they're telling. It's hi. Wow. Okay, anyway, so, um, so basically, my name's Paula. I do Ash's hair. Um, so that makes me a celebrity hairstylist. And <laughs> so, um, anyway. So we're basically talking about a lot of the tools that I use. Um, so I'm a facilitator for access consciousness, which basically just empowers people to be themselves, be happy, all the things. Anyway, so one of the things that we're talking about um, is some the, the idea that like a question always empowers and opens you up to possibilities that you may not have been available. Oh, thank you so much. We're both so pretty and beautiful. Um, and so I get back. Don't read the comments for a second. Focus. <laughs> listen, listen, I can multi I'm an infinite being. I can do all the things. I can read comments and talk about it and look at how beautiful you are. Oh, I forgot that you're perfect. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep going. Got it for you. Um, anyway, so we're talking about questions. And so the three questions we are sharing, one is what else is possible that I haven't even considered? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just, you can ask that anytime um, you're like, you can't, you just, you need some help looking for another possibility. So you can ask that question. The next thing is, 
Uh, the next question I have is, uh, who am I today and what grand and glorious adventures am I going to have? Um, and let me tell you a little bit more about that because when you, um, so the thing about who am I today is that if you imagine that every morning you wake up with, <laughs> you wake up with a clean slate, right? So every, every morning you wake up, so all of the like, you know, mistakes that you made, the mistakes, so all the mistakes or all of the like. Some uh, mistakes get made, that's all right, that's all okay. right. All right, that's all okay. right, okay. <laughs> So. <laughs> We're super fired. Okay, so mistakes. Okay, so mistakes, like all of that is erased, right? So if you wake up the next morning and you're, it's like 15 mistakes, right? You guys know that movie? Are you too young for that? I remember Drew Barrymore. Yeah, Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler, where every morning she wakes up, she has amnesia. So, like, every day she has a perfectly clean slate. So, like, the mistakes, the, like, successes, the, like, everything is gone. Like, she has no memory of it. So she gets to recreate her life every single day and gets, it, gets to create it however she wants it to show up with all the joy and all the fun and all the possibility and like all the love and all the like light that she desires to have in her world, like she gets to create that. And she happens to have a man who loves her and like desires to create that life with her every single day. So it's like, that's the beauty of who does it, or who am I today and what grand and glorious adventures is that you get to choose who you are and who you be and how you show up in the world. It's called 50 first dates. Who you be. Yep. <laughs> Um, anyway, and then the last question is, who does it belong to? It's, there's actually a million questions. One of my other favorite questions is, how does it get even better than this? <clears throat> well, I like that. Well, yeah. I have to shut my door. I swear, I live in West Hollywood, and there are a million things going on. There's, like, sirens, and there's, like, a loudspeaker. Hold on. Okay. Wait, keep telling people, because I can okay. hear you. Okay, perfect. Keep going. Okay. So basically, um, so how does it get even better than this is a really great question to ask to have things show up as even greater. So it's a good question to ask when things aren't going great. And it's a good question to ask when things are going really great. So like, how many streams are you right now on Spotify? 400 godzillion? On Moral of the Story? Yeah. Oh, I think 120 million or something crazy. Okay. How does it get even better than that? I don't think it. I don't know. No, I don't want to stop that. that. You're that. like, have I taught you nothing? Nothing. Stop it. <laughs> that was no. Just... <laughs> that was... <laughs> As the words are coming out of my mouth, you're like, no. No. Oh, my. <laughs> um, no, I love that. I have always been. Um, I, I am a very positive thinker. I'm like, uh, I'm very, I've always been, before I knew what it meant, a glass half full kind of gal. Yeah. Um, I, and I know that I am lucky in that g genetically, like I was born, like me and my brother, same set of parents, very genetically different. Like, um, we got different strands from different people. I woke up and I, I, came into this world and was like, hello world, everything is great and awesome. And he was like, whoa, this shit is hard. Like out, out the gate, we were very different human beings. And I, so I do, I want to recognize my privilege of, of being predispos predisposed, predisposed. Oh, sure. Yeah, thank you for, for positivity. Um, but that said, I have always um, thought small with my career. Um, mm -hmm. When people were like, do you want to have a Grammy one day? Do you, do you see yourself selling out Madison Square Garden one day? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, no, I don't. Like, I just want to make – my answer has always been, and still I'm working on this, is like, I just want to make music I love. It's like a very, like, humble, but I also – limiting limiting yeah well and it's like okay can i stop you there like even even it's like have you actually acknowledged though the choices that you've made that create the like positivity and joy that shows up in your life because it's like is it's i just i'm getting like you're i'm gonna stop reading the comments because they're making me laugh but it's I like you know but you're, 
I told you. <laughs> I, I, when I went viral, I mean, when we went viral on TikTok and you texted or like, do not read the comments. <laughs> I, no, you can't. Well, on this, it's like if we're asking, if we're like, okay, ask us a question and we'll read it. But sometimes it get or a language I don't understand. I'm so sorry. I just don't know. Okay, sorry, continue. I know. I love it. But it's like, you. that's also like a choice that you made to like continue to choose like towards the greatness that you knew was possible. Like every day you choose towards a possibility. And it's just like you, like you said about me. I've watched you do the work. Like you, you're constantly doing the work and you're constantly choosing vulnerability. And that's part of the reason that your fans love you so much is that you're willing to get really vulnerable and vulnerable just doesn't, doesn't mean like, Oh, I'm so sad. I'm so blah, blah, blah. But it's like, you're honest about what is. And you're also like, I don't have it figured it out, figured it, it, it out, but I'm going to keep trying and I'm going to keep choosing. Uh, yeah. And can I call bullshit on like faux vulnerability? That's like, I'm sad today and I'm going to tell the world that I'm sad today. And like, uh, if you are sad, man, let's talk about it. Like, let's get to the, let's get to the bottom of it. I do not want to discount your sadness, but if you're just trying to get freaking attention on social media, that is not vulnerability. It is not yeah. vulnerability to tell the world that you're sad and should try and get attention for it. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not really but, talking about fan bases at all. I'm talking about freaking artists. You're talking about this. influencers like us? I'm talking about other social media influencers like me and you. You know what I mean? On our level. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're not on our level yet, but... <laughs> like, they're trying. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> That, that very thing that you're talking about right now actually ties in perfectly to who does it belong to. Also, you guys, you can only take like 90% of what we say seriously because we're constantly, like, I just love how we bounce between like these like intense conversations and then just like total chaos and idiocy. <laughs> I know we have really intense, beautiful moments of clarity and intellect and maybe even philosophy. And then we just screw the whole thing up with our wild, wild ways. I'm hot. Are you hot? It's, girl, stop bragging. <laughs> I am. I need to open a window. Sure. Sure. Well, you did just close the door. But like, okay, so so what you're just talking about with the vulnerability is, um, so when, so we asked another, the other question is, who does it belong to? And this is what you guys have to get is that, like, when you talk about, like, I'm sad or I'm whatever, like we're all, like we said in the beginning, energetically connected. And the thing about that is it's almost like we're these like human tuning forks. So if someone's like cool. bad, right? Like they're vibrating at a certain level and because we're a tuning fork, what tuning forks do is they actually vibrate together, right? So what happens is it's really, um, it's common and it's really easy for us to like go into the trauma and drama or go into the like sadness or into whatever the depression and it's like 99.999 percent of your thoughts feelings and emotions don't actually belong to you you're just really aware and you're super aware of all the things that are going on around you and this goes back to when i was talking about the like lower harmonics of like feeling and thinking versus like knowing and perceiving is that you can you can like the question I ask when I start to get like what I think is depressed is, am I depressed or am I perceiving depression? Like, am I sad or am I perceiving sadness? Like, am I, am I feeling this or am I actually perceiving it? And then that's when you can ask, who does it belong to? Because that's where, like, if you're willing to actually look at what's true for you, like 99% of your thoughts, feelings, and emotions don't actually belong to you. You're just, really aware but we go into the wrongness and are like oh i'm like so bad or i'm terrible or i'm depressed or i'm sad and then we stop there instead of actually asking a question like who does it belong to is this mine and at that point you can like just energetically return to sender with consciousness attached and send that person energetic contributions with then which then puts them in choice so they have information to be like okay cool am i sad am i feeling sad or am i perceiving sadness so it creates this like energetic chain am i feeling sad or am i perceiving sadness right whoa 
That's really good. <laughs> everyone, everyone is commenting is just like, whoa, I've never thought about it that way. Um, frick. That's so good. And some, and, uh, and reality is once in a while, it is yeah. going to be yours. Totally. But by asking the question, you get ownership over it. Like you right. get to, yeah. Sorry, continue. Sorry, I'm like, I keep talking over you. But it's like, I love like, it. Let me just sit back and pretend like I'm not going to talk, but we both know I will. But it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, yeah, that's where, um, it's where like, okay, so then if you're sad and that doesn't work for you, make a different choice. Like, that's the thing is like, okay, cool. So does it work for you to be sad? All right. Like, then continue to choose to be sad. But it's like, if you actually desire joy, it's like, what else is possible here that I haven't even considered? And the awareness gives you the ability or the, um, option to choose different right it gives you it it gives you greater access to all which the i think i would say like a lot of people maybe um are comfortable in not in not asking the questions because they don't want the responsibility back on their shoulders yeah is that have you like encountered that feel that way totally and it's like and that's fine but you just have to acknowledge that that's what you're choosing like, it's not wrong to choose that. It's just mm -hmm. a choice. It's so, not wrong. It's just a choice. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. And that's, that's the other question, too. <laughs> Did you just throw your notebook? No, it's still my hand. I just, oh. I, I'm just too excited. I'm, I'm choosing excitement. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, obviously, there are situations where, like, you know, for like younger, some of your younger fans I know are like, um, you know, you may, may be living, the reality is you may be living in a like abusive situation or like maybe your, maybe your situation isn't ideal or it's not where you'd like it to be, but it's like, you can still from that space, ask what else is possible here and then ask the universe to show you or whatever you believe, God, whoever it is, like, um, like ask the universe to show you what else is possible and to like bring those people and those things and those awarenesses into your life that will help you to create the reality that you desire to have. Mm. Yeah. Cause that's definitely probably a question for people who are maybe, you know, what is it? 15 to maybe 18, 19 who are still living home with their parents. Maybe their parents, they're, they're in a, they're in a constant tuning fork situation where like, they don't have a choice to live somewhere else. So the home that they live in is with parents who maybe, you know, are unhappy themselves or in, in an unhappy marriage or whatever it may be. And would you have advice to the, those people? You know, is it as simple as asking what other possibilities are there? Mm -hmm. or... it is, like, and, and that's where the thing is. Um... It's like when you start to look at those, like whatever the, whatever the situation is, like good, bad, right, wrong. It's like when you actually are willing to acknowledge that you have choice, it's like you can choose to still like one, not buy into other people's reality or not like you can ask to, you can ask to know what's actually true for you because what's true for you will always make you feel lighter. Like what's true for you will always be the bright spot and a lie will always make you feel heavier. So it's like, you can know what's true for you. And it's like, that is what allows you to keep choosing towards what you desire to have is you may be in a situation currently, like, I mean this 10 years ago, I was like broker than broke, like so broke. I had like negative dollars in my bank account. Right. And it's like, I knew that I, that there was another possibility available and I wasn't there yet. And also I kept choosing and I kept asking like, what can I choose that will create the future I know is possible. And I'm still not like, I'm still asking for more. I'm still like creating more in my life. Um, you know, so it's one of the things where like, what, what else is possible? What else can I choose? Like if I knew, you know, like who am I today? And, and if you didn't know the failures of yesterday, like what future could you actually create? Mm, I love that so much. 
I still think I, I, I feel like my favorite question right now, only because it probably resonates the most with me personally is the, who does it belong to? Um, because I, I've always, you know, I identified as a tuning, like tuning fork and I've felt that. And, um, I, it, it was even the difference of, I went for a run. I was fi fine in the morning, feeling good. Um, journal did my whole, you know, morning routine that kind of like, I'm like, okay, what in my life, what are ways in my life that I can, um, encourage light energy in my life, you know, cause there's like, I can easily encourage dark energy, whatever. So I went, I was feeling good, like bright shining star was going to get working. And then I went for a run and had to pass like a bunch of people where I had to like cross the street, go around. And I got back and I was like, Oh, I felt, and this doesn't always happen, but it was like the weight of every human I passed, like I absorbed it on my run. Yeah. And I was like, I got home and I was like, Ooh, I feel like I need to list 10 things I'm grateful for right now. And like, talk, like talk through this and, and journal it out. And cause those are always my first ways. I haven't thought about the questions thing and I love that, but I feel like I could take the questions. Oh, I could take, I could take the questions into my journaling and kind of like write them out as well. But and it's like, how much is your body? Like our bodies also have this natural healing capacity. So how much is it with all of the kindness that you be like, is your body actually healing those other bodies as you pass by them and like taking on their stuff? So it's like, what if you asked your body like, Hey body, I get that we have a healing capacity. Can we heal them without taking it onto ourselves? Mm, yeah. Like you can ask your body to do that. And also like, even when you think about, think about when you, even your choice to go out and go running. And I know that's something you do a lot, but it's like, when you think about the earth, right? Like when, how great do you feel when you go out and you put your toes in the, in the grass or um, like when you're at the and you can like it's like the water just like washes away everything it's like negative yeah and, yeah totally and it's like one of those things where it's like the earth constantly has this like healing capacity as well and i'm like not like what you consider an outdoors person but i will tell you that when i'm feeling funky like going out and taking a walk and like receiving from the earth is like such a gift and it's like our bodies do the same thing like they will heal things and people around us and that's okay. And that's really actually an amazing capacity. But it's like you are, but you talk to your body and say, Hey body, like, cool. Thank you so much for like being the healing and having that capacity. And what if we didn't have to take it on ourselves like, and have that heaviness in our world? Like you can actually ask your body to do that. And it's not a wrongness. Oh, I love that. I, w I feel like I would love to, you know, like add that consciousness and awareness, like, pre a run, pre a going out into the world. Cause like my mom um, was working at a grocery store at the beginning of all this. And she was coming home and was just like, people are losing their minds are just the most miserable I've seen in a society. And she would just come home, you know, kind of like me, but way worse of just he so heavy. Um, and yeah, if there's a way that we can go out into the world, because it's like, we still have to, we still need to go get our toilet paper. We still, I still need my runs. Like it, it keeps me healthy. It keeps me feeling good. But to do it, to add consciousness to it before, I don't know. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> so I think also, um, it's funny because I was actually thinking about this and I've done this with you before because I, I remember when you were, on, you were on tour, we had a conversation once about like energy flows. Um, and if ever you get to a space, I love your face right now. I love you so much. <laughs> I'm just so excited about what you're about to say. I already know. <laughs> so it's like you can ask. So after your run, you can ask like, who does it belong to or is this mine? And you're talking about what you're asking is like, well, what can I do? as I go out onto my run to like prepare or like be aware. And it's like, you have to actually expand out energetically and lower your walls and barriers. So like you mentioned before, <laughs> so you, like, 
right. letting my so, shoulders rest. Right. So, like you mentioned before, like the vulnerability and it's like, we so often in, in just from like living, a lot of times we build up these walls, like these protective walls and barriers. And it's like, actually, again, just like I said before, you are leaving, like you're pushing the bad stuff out, but you're also not allowing the good stuff to come in. And so by lowering your walls and barriers and actually going into like a kind of more neutral energetic place where you're willing to receive everything and not judge it. Cause that's the thing about consciousness is consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. So like, mm -hmm. if right. And nothing's wrong and nothing's good and nothing's bad. Like it's all just a choice that people are making. Right. So it's like, when you look at that, it's like, okay, so this heaviness, like if you didn't have to fight against it by having walls and barriers up, it's kind of like, um, like energetic shadow boxing where it's like, if someone's okay, let, let me, let me explain. So it's like, if you, so it's like, like those little puppies when they're like, yeah, right. Totally. Um, so like, okay. If you ever, this is a, maybe a weird analogy, but I think it works. Like, so if you've ever watched like a boxing match, like uh -huh. the majority of the time what happens is um, if like a boxer or a fighter goes to like land a punch and the person deflects, there's nothing for that thing to like bump up against. And so that, that fighter gets tired faster. And that's mm -hmm. where shadow boxing is like more exhausting because you're never hitting up against an music. Cause like the, the second I punch my hand, there's like a force that then pushes that back. And I have then have momentum to keep punching. But if I actually lower my walls and barriers, there's nothing for it to like punch against. There's nothing for it to hit. And so there's no reaction and then there's no continued momentum. So like if you lower your walls, and barriers, there's actually nothing for you to resist. And it's almost like the just pass through you and you're not affected by them. So that's the first thing is lower your walls and barriers. And then the thing after that is you actually want to expand out energetically. Should we do this? Is this weird? If we do like an expansion exercise really no, quick? No, let's, let's totally do it. And then, and then our hour long Instagram <laughs> live podcast can come to its end. Then. So, <laughs> so you guys can do this all the time. So what you, wherever you're at right now, um, watching or not watching, <laughs> well, you're watching obviously cause you're here, but, um, okay. So go ahead and close your eyes and then just take a deep breath in through your nose, all the way down to your toes. And blow it out. And you can put a hand on your body if you'd like. Like, I'll usually put one on my tummy, like one on my chest, and just like say hi to my body. And you can like already start to perceive the energy change a little bit. Like, you get a little bit more present. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and expand out. So, to the edges, expand your being out to the edges of your body. So, all the way from the top of your head to your toes. And then go ahead and fill the entire room that you're in. So top, bottom, left, right, front, back, all around, expand out. And then expand out as big as the city. We're going to go a little faster. Expand out as big as the state you're in or country. And then expand out 100,000 miles in every direction. So up into the sky, down into the earth, wrap all the way around the earth through it. So front, back, left, right, top, bottom, expand out 100,000 miles. And then go all the way out, like almost like a sonic boom to the edges of the universe. So even if you're like, I don't know where the edges of the universe are, just ask your being to expand out and keep expanding and keep expanding and keep expanding further and even go a little further and then lower your walls and barriers even more. And take a breath. And then expand out a little bit more or a lot. Okay, so then stay expanded and then open your eyes. Hi. Hi. So that's your space of being. Like I that, love this. That's you. So it's like we constantly go through life and we like get so contracted and so contracted and we put up walls and barriers and we like we suddenly like bend, fold, staple, and mutilate ourselves into this like little mm -hmm. like box that isn't actually us. So it's like when we actually expand out and lower our walls and barriers, that's when you can actually have infinite knowing, being, perceiving, and receiving. Oh, uh, Paula. Whew. I love that. We did that exercise. I, I know exactly where I was the first time you walked me through that. 
We were FaceTiming. I think it was for like an hour long. And I was, it was my second to last tour. We were in Toronto. I was in the hotel room. What? And we got on FaceTime and you were like, I can tell that you are a shell of a human. And I was just g gone. Like what? I, because I know you. It's not that your posts were bad. I could just tell. I could perceive your energy. Yeah, it was just, I wasn't, I definitely didn't feel like myself at all. And you walked me through that. And I feel like I almost, I about cried the first time we did it. And it was like, so um, impactful to me to see how like limiting, limiting my beliefs were like on my own life and my own like perception of me as a being. And because I was doing the opposite of expanding and lowering my boundaries, I was contracting and cr crawling up into my shell and was like, maybe if I hide from the world and these bunch of men in this sprinter van that I have to share a car with for two months of my life, maybe if I just hide, then I will slowly feel better again. And the more I contracted and the more I tried to hide, the worse I felt. Yeah. And so these very like, human physical nature ways of handling anxiety and stress yep. aren't actually serving our being oh it's so good paula it's so good uh, yeah and it's just like more than serving our being it's like it's not who you be it's like trying to cram this massive thing into like this teeny little box like it doesn't work it's uncomfortable and like, it just doesn't work. Like, you literally have to cut off parts of yourself in order to, like, fit. And then even still, it doesn't fit right. Because it's mm -hmm. not. <sighs> I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you so much. I can't wait to see you in person. And when I can actually, I don't know if the next time I'll see you in person, I can actually snuggle you. But the time I can really snuggle you and give you a big hug, it's going to be game over. I don't know. Game over. Um, well, I feel like, obviously, I've stolen your time. Well, no, you've no. given it graciously for so long. But do you want to leave everybody with one last note? Do you feel like you've said everything you need to say? What's um, What would you leave people with? I would say the question that I would love for you to go away with is can I swear yeah I don't care okay um <laughs> if you're not as fucked up as you think you are that's I mean can I write it down <laughs> and Do I, I get to choose yeah and you get to choose it's like what if Someone's making fun of me for saying, can I swear? And someone just said, Paula. Yeah. <laughs> Paula. But it's well, like, that's the thing is, it's just like, what if? And if you don't want to swear, you can say, what What if I'm not as messed if, up as I am? Yeah, what if you're not as messed up as you think you are? And it's like, that's the thing, you guys, is you've got to get, like, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Like, you're not wrong. No matter what the world tries to tell you, and no matter if you, like, have made choices in the past that you're not proud of, like, it's fine. Like, stop judging yourself and just keep choosing. Like, mm. you're not. Oh, I love you. Let's stay on forever and then just look at each other like this and be like, I love Let's you. Let's just stay. Eleanor, I love you. <laughs> Seriously, I'm, I'm going to call you. Let's talk about that giveaway. I'll call you about it. Okay, yeah. Okay, we'll figure it out. I don't know exactly how that's going to look like, but um, I I just want to, now I wonder, I'm reading all the comments. Some, oh. are, some are whack, and you know who you are, people. <laughs> some, 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 come on. And, and I love you, and I love you, but I'm not going to play moral of the story. I'm just not. Just kidding. No, just kidding. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my gosh. Surprise concert, everybody. No, I am, I am, um, I'm going to instead take everything we just talked about and journal for the next hour of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Um, okay, but real talk, um, girl, that, um, the Beach Boys thing that you put together, I'm so proud of you. That was yeah. incredible. Thank you so it much. Was, I'm proud of myself too. It was in like some of the people that you got to, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, famous. <laughs> Sells out the troubadour once. Sells out the troubadour once. And then gets Phineas and Ryan Tedder and Max and all these like amazing with like, they were amazing. Those, those people were, wait, was it Ryan Tedder? I can't remember. Did I say the wrong name? Yeah, Ryan Tedder. I'm not, I'm not cool. I'm not one of the cool kids. I'm just me. You're, yes, you are. Don't let your limiting beliefs trap you, <laughs> Paula. <laughs> um, yeah, that was such a cool, I had so much fun. I mean, oh. and I, once I was doing it, what? I'm just, sorry, I'm reading, Charlie, Charlie Berg was really amazing. Oh, Charlie. Charlie was insane. I know, I was, it was when I was like, okay, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to start talking through and, and reaching out. I was like, you know, a lot of really famous people it was like, these people are my friends and I know them and they'll totally do this. And then they were like, yeah, I'll totally do that. And I was like, it was awesome. I it, felt like it was it, a good, um, quit talking over me. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I was just going to say it was a really good experience at like, setting my mind on something really big and then accomplishing it and that, like doing things, um, doing things to make yourself proud. And like when it's like literally like no one knows in my fan base, a lot of people don't know who the Beach Boys are at all. Like I wasn't doing it for other people. I mean, I was doing it because I wanted to raise like awareness and for the charity, of course. But it was like something I knew that if I executed, I was going to be proud of myself for. And that mattered a lot more than anything else and man if you can put something on your list every day that is like can I do this and then you cross it out and you do it man like the, yeah. the self-confidence it builds is so good so yeah good. it's so true and like I think also <sighs> to like when you're willing to leave like people more often than not will leave with you like that's and it's like you just have to show people that you're willing to do it and then other people will do it so um, well, you've been leading by example and I have been following girl. You've been, we've just, we've been, we've both been blazing our own trails and cheering each other on along the way. I just feel like I just want to stay near you. I just want to be in your orbit. So I'm tuning at the same, I wanted to be, I want to be a fork in your orbit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a tuning fork. If you want to be in my orbit, you have to be you. That's all I ask. You can't be anybody but you. I want to be me. Because that's how you change As a fork in your orbit, right, tuning so. at your vibration. This makes sense. People <laughs> who are just jumping on now are probably like. <laughs> if you guys are just joining us, Ash is about to play moral of the story. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to my YouTube IG. Click subscribe. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Someone's asking, can I turn into a Paula fan account? Yep, totally. Go ahead, Children of Ash. Which, which fan account? Children of Ash. Is Children Ash. of Ash. Honestly, if you, I, no harm, no foul. <laughs> I was thinking of making my own music account into a Paula fan account. It basically is. My entire Instagram story today is just you. <laughs> I, I never, did you see where like you posted something and then I reposted it and then you reposted it and then I reposted it. Like we just keep, I never do that. But today I did. Inception. Yeah. We, we're, we cannot be handled. We cannot be stopped. Oh, we are unstoppable. And so and don't are, you, don't you try. You. I thought you were going, and bye. <laughs> you were <laughs> signing off. <laughs> okay, long enough. I love it. You're, 
Okay, I'm cutting us up. I love you so much. I love you. I'm going to call you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being you. This has been so lovely and wonderful, and my heart feels full. My heart feels full, too, but can I say something? And I might actually cry. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because I just want to say to all of our 50 watchers right now. <laughs> hey, everybody. Someone just said I feel like I'm at a sleepover. But, like, I just want you to know that I'm so proud of you. And I've watched you, like, over the years just keep showing up for yourself and, like, even more for other people. And, like, to me, you are a testament to, like, when you're willing to be authentic and vulnerable, like, that that is the life that people desire. Like, you are the voice in, like, the wilderness for people. <laughs> it's true. Like, you're the light. Like, you are the light for people. And it's, like, so cool to watch. Um, and it's it's not easy. And I know it's easy for you. And I know that people, um, you know, like, people, people achieve things and it happens overnight. And... Like, I just, I'm so proud of you for choosing and choosing and choosing and choosing and allowing me to be part of that journey. Um, and I'm- You make me cry. But it's like, the other thing too is like, this is just the beginning. Like, like I, when I, like when I watch you, like I knew, like, I just have always known that there's like something special about you. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really proud of you. Like, Aww. I'm so proud, like I am so much and it's like, it's such an honor to know you. Oh, I'm you actually getting me. Uh, <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you for saying that. That means it really does mean the world to me. And I do preach that like the most important person to be proud of me is myself. But like, ooh, I do soak up when like people I love and really respect um, that that you're proud of me means a lot to me so thank you so much but it's like too okay I know sorry I'm, I can go on forever but it's like the other thing too that I love about you is that you're the same always so whether we're like in the salon being idiots whether we're like here on an Instagram live being idiots whether you're on stage <laughs> like you know what I mean it's like you are the same and that that's actually what like moves mountains like that authenticity is and that vulnerability is what changes people's worlds and that is like it's not something that everyone chooses and so and I know it's not easy like it's not easy to that's not always the easy choice but you keep choosing it again and again and again and I'm just I love you that's all well you keep choosing it I'll keep choosing it yeah girl let's we'll stick together Somebody just said, I, I need Paula in my life. We oh. all need a Paula. And then someone else goes, we all need a Paula in our lives. I feel like I need to screenshot that. I need. I will. <laughs> With that. Oh. Okay. Wow. Cool. I, I seriously, and I was thinking about it earlier because I was having a conversation with my clothing stylist. And I was oh. like... No. So we had like we we've been like catching up and she's like one of my really like close friends too and I was like I love that the people in my life in my circle are people that like not only like how many people are like close with their hairstylist <laughs> like you're you're my girl like we have each other's back like if you need me in court, even in court, call me and I'm like, I'm there. I'll put have a mask on and gloves, but I will wipe your tears from your face. Well, you'll put it, you'll put it in my room. room. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, Paula. Far, there, there. far away. <laughs> Ew, I put my foot up to the camera and it's so dirty. That, that was, was just amazing. I wish. Okay. I'm so done. Okay. <laughs> Everybody needs a Paula. Everybody. Okay. Whoever's watching. I know it only says 50 people are watching right now, but I'll tell you, it'll be like, it'll be like 5,000 people total at the end. It's crazy how it works out. But um, all of you mean the world to me and Paula means the world to me. And this has been the longest IG live to date. I'll tell you that much. You got some like real ones here because a lot of these people have been here like from the since we started. Oh, 
go get yourself a drink, make yourself dinner. I don't know what you need, but you get yourself a snack. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. I think this is it. All right. You guys are just ready. <sighs> about to play moral of the story. <laughs> now I, I'm gonna have to do it. No. I'm signing you off. You're okay. cut. I love you so much, and I will. I'll call you like in five minutes. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Bye, everyone. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sweaty. Somebody got their happy walk. Yeah, I see your comments. Y'all think I don't read each and every comment, even the ones I can't physically read because they're not in English. I am a I really can only speak English. It's terrible. Anyways, everybody, please go, <laughs> go follow Hair by Paula Peralta. She um, posts those like golden wisdom nuggets all of the time. Um, and if I'm not reposting them, then definitely like go watch them for yourself. Um, thanks for every, I see your comments and I love you too. Um, Children of Ash, if you want to become a Paula Peralta fan account, I just really can't blame you. Um, I had to burp so bad. Um, <laughs> that whole time. Be well. I love you. And I'll see you soon. All right. Bye guys.